to flashback a recap of stories that made headlines during the week where early in the week on the review we saw an extension of post-election activities from Bayel Kogi and Imo State governorship polls. On Monday morning the Independent National Electoral Commission declared incumbent governor Doye Diri winner of the Bayel governorship election. The returning officer for the election, Professor Farouk Kuta, declared Mr. Deary winner of the exercise having satisfied the requirements of the law. The PDP candidate won his All Progressive Congress counterpart, Timmy Prey Silva, in the contested ex exercise in the oil rich state. Mr. Deary, who came into power in 2020, got a total of uh, 175,196 votes, while Silva polled 130. 10,108 votes. The Labour Party scored a total of 905 votes to come at a distant third. Silva Timipre Malin of APC has 110,108 votes. Billy Doye of PDP has 175,000 196 votes. That Diri Doye of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the loan, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Signed by Farouk Adamokota, the returning officer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, on that same day, President Bola Tinubu congratulated Governor, Doe, Governor Hope Uzadima of Imo State, Governor Doe Duri of Bayasa State, and Governor-elect Usman Ododo of Kogi State on their victory. The President, in a statement by his special advice on media and publicity, a jury in Galale commended the electorate in Imo, Kogi, and Bayasa for their participation in the electoral process. President Tinubu said the outcome of the elections reflects the wishes of the people emphasizing that democracy thrives when voters reward competence, transparency, and good governance. He expressed gratitude to the Independent National Electoral Commission for creating a level playing field for all contestants. He also commended the nation's security agencies for maintaining law and order during the elections. Well, on to Tuesday now in the nation's capital where organized labor began an indefinite nationwide strike over the alleged ill-treatment method on the president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Joe Ajiro, in Imo State. But the federal government insisted the industrial action which contravenes a court injunction was not in national interest. The first day of the NLC TUC strike and activities at the Boslin Federal Secretariat in the nation's capital are still business as usual. Workers and visitors are seen going in and out of the secretariat. It's different strokes for different folks, as some of the workers describe the strike as selfish, while others kill behind organized labor. Yeah, I think that one is uh, political. You know, anything that happens at the political scene, you cannot generalize it to the national issue. I think maybe that's why people don't take them seriously. They should stop politi politicizing everything. They are fighting for it for our own good. They should sit at home and pending when the issue will be ratified. Your confirm, fellow comrades, beauty for Imo, you are not taking it personal on the nation. You want to cripple the economy, the, kind of, the kind of economy they are trying to, 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 to revive. There's an order of court, so I uh, call on the labor leaders to obey the order of the court. Already, the federal government insists the strike is against is national right. interest. The special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Nonuga, says the NLC and TUC decided to punish a whole country of over 200 million people over a personal matter involving the NLC president, Joe Ajero. The Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria disagrees with the government as it shows all gates to the National Assembly preventing workers and visitors from assessing the complex in compliance with organized labor's directive. Somebody was brutally beaten, eyes swollen, almost a dislocated shoulder and neck, and somebody somewhere is saying that he's not in, 
he, he is not aware of it. It happened in your street, in your state. He was weeks away by the police and talks. We demand an apology. We are not allowed entrance um, for the reason that labor is on strike. And the, the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress have now declared an indefinite strike and feigned ignorance of an order by the court, stopping them from demonstrating to register their displeasure over the assault on Joe Ajero, president of the NLC. Well, on that same day, the 10th House of Representatives unveiled its eight-point legislative agenda. At the occasion, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajdeen Abbas, said his leadership is committed to a partnership with President Bola Tinubu, and they are hoping to implement the Renewed Hope Agenda. In the few years, every dispensation of the parliament formulates its own legislative agenda that will drive its course for four years. This agenda says the parliament to stay focused and serve as a guide as it responds to evolving national and international challenges. Just last week, the House considered and passed its eight-point agenda after months of painstaking legislative exercise. It is now time to formally make the document public. It is titled The People's House. The speaker says the policy document was rooted in the fundamental belief that the primary role of legislators is to serve the interest of constituents. The legislative agenda of the 10th House of Representatives, aptly titled The People's House, is rooted in the fundamental belief that our primary role as lawmakers is to serve the, the best interest of our constituents. President Bola Tinumbu was represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, and he expressed his administration's commitment to impact the lives of the people. The people of Nigeria deserve a legislature with experience, wisdom, and determination. Recognizes the importance of effective government to prevent social and economic development. In general, we have compromised the situation. The high quality of the legislative government the House of Representatives and a demonstration of their commitment to the science. For the President of the Senate, the most important task at hand will be to work closely with the executive to provide long-lasting solutions that will set the nation on a sure path of development. We are wrapped this agenda around issues germane and crucial to our national development. And you have committed yourselves to supporting the executive arm of government, led by His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tunibu. The eight priority areas in the legislative agenda include strengthening good governance, improving national security, law reform, economic growth and development, influencing and redirecting Nigeria's foreign policy, as well as climate change and environmental sustainability. We're still in the week on the review, the Joint National Executive Council of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress suspended the nationwide strike which had entered its second day on Wednesday. The decision was reached at a meeting which deliberated on the outcome of an earlier meeting with the federal government led by the National Security Advisor Nuhu Rabadu, General Secretary of the NOC and the first Deputy President of the TUC confirmed the suspension in different telephone charts with TUC News. More significant for the Labour movement was the unreserved apology tendered by the NSA on behalf of the federal government for the brutalization of NLC president and other members of the Congress. Well, also on Wednesday, the Court of Appeals sitting in Lagos dismissed the appeals of PDP's governorship candidate Olajide Adediro and Labour Party's Badibo Rhodes Vivo. They had challenged the election victory of the APC's Babajide Sonwulu and his deputy Obafemi Amzat in the 18th of March governorship poll. The appeal panel made up of justices Vagatanimpa, Samuel Bola and Paul Bassi held that Mr. Adedinro couldn't complain of being denied fair hearing at the lower court, having filed his additional witness statement on oath outside the stipulated time. 
the court held that the appellant was a meddlesome interloper in challenging the emergence of Mrs. Sonwolu and Hamzat at the primary election of their party, the All Progressives Congress, as he was neither an aspirant or a member of the APC. On the issue that the governor forged his secondary school certificate, the court found that the appellant failed to establish forgery as alleged by not tendering the presumed original certificate along with what was said to be fake. We had 34 grounds of appeal, but they were narrowed down. Some were say, they said some were pre-election matters that, again, the allegation of um, falsification of the results against um, Governor Sawolu, they said that um, it's actually that we didn't prove enough, we didn't show enough proof. We're going to review the situation and we'll take a decision. The court also dismissed the appeal of the Labour Party's Gladiable Roads Vivo, which was centered around an alleged renunciation of Nigerian citizenship by the deputy governor. The justices held that the appeal fell flat on its face due to the paucity of evidence. According to them, under Section 28 of the Nigerian Constitution, a Nigerian citizen by birth doesn't lose his citizenship even when he assumes the citizenship of another country. For me, it seems that the tribunal did their job. And uh, talking to other lawyers, to lawyers, senior ones, and of course the young ones, they were of the opinion that this is, uh, this is a solid case. So, uh, you know, you leave it to the judiciary and you do what you have to do. That's it. That's for the lawyers to be apprehensive, not for me. Be able to, you know, attest to and also, you know, be able to brief you upon is that if you allege anything forgery, that means it's a criminal offense. And by our constitution, criminal offense must be evidence act, must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. The court ordered each party to bear the respective costs of the appeal. Uh -oh, to Thursday now, we're in the nation's capital where the Court of Appeal Abuja Division declared inconclusive the 18th of March governorship election in Zamfara State, which produced Dauda Lawal as the elected governor of the state. A three-member panel of justices of the court in a unanimous judgment set aside the declaration of Dauda Lawal of the People's Democratic Party as a lawfully elected governor. Justice Sibul Bagi Wu read the lead judgment ordered that a fresh election be conducted at Maradon, a local government area of the state, and in other areas where elections were either cancelled or did not hold at all. The court held that the use of IREV information to declare Mr. Lawal as governor in the absence of polling units results was unlawful, illegal, and unconstitutional. And on the final day of the week on the review, the Court of Appeal upheld the ruling of the Election Petitions Tribunal sacking Governor Abba Yusuf of Kano State. In its judgment on Friday, the Court of Appeal ruled that the fielding of Abba Yusuf was in breach of the Electoral Act law as it was not qualified to contest that election. Judgment for Bauchi and Kanu State has both were happening in different venues at the appellate court at the same time. For the Kanu case, a three member panel of the Court of Appeal led by Justice Moore Adume in a unanimous judgment declared Nasir Gauna of the All Progressives Congress winner of the 18th March governorship election in Kanu State. The election petition tribunal had declared Mr. Gauna of the APC the winner of the election after it deducted what it described as invalid vote cast in favor of Mr. Yusuf. But the Court of Appeal upheld the decision of the tribunal and used it as a basis to disqualify the election of Abba Yusuf of the New Nigeria People's Party. Two aspects. One, there are appeals against the decision of the tribunal to deduct the 165,000 valid votes. Those appeals were dismissed and the decision of the tribunal was upheld. Always accept whatever transpired because Allah is the one that gives power to whoso he will. In the case of Bauchi State, the appeal court affirmed the election of Governor Bala Mohammed, delivering the judgment a three-member panel led by Justice Chidebere Uwa dismiss the appeal for lacking in merit. People should have confidence in the judiciary. 
and I, I as a person, with my colleague, Right Honorable Mohammed Owel Jato, and the people and government of Bauchi State, we have absolute confidence in the judiciary. It is expected that if the parties who are not pleased with the judgment of the appeal court will approach the apex court with hopes for a more favorable decision. A wrapping up flashback now, a federal high court in Abuja on Friday ordered that Mr. Gordon Emefiele, a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, be remanded in Kuje Correctional Center. His remand order came after Justice Olukayode Adeni directed that the former CBN governor should be released to his lawyers on November 8 after spending 151 days in detention. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had arranged the former CBN governor on an amended CISCAN charge. Emefele's counsel, Marty Buka, had moved an application for his bail, but Rotimi Oedekbo, the AFCC counsel, opposed the bail request on behalf of the federal government. But after listening to the argument, Justice Moazza said he needed a little time to study the exhibit supplied by Emefele to support his request for bail. Taken and he had uh, pleaded not guilty. His application for bail was moved and uh, we also uh, filed our counter affidavit and adopted same. We had equally prayed the court for expeditious hearing and determination of the case. And my Lord had given us uh, a date also for trial. Um, my Lord had told us that we should assemble our witnesses and I believe with the cooperation of the defense, the case will be heard and determined expeditiously. You recall that on the 8th of November, the court has granted him interim bail and handed him over to us. Um, um, he has been available and um, we've been able to produce him to court. And uh, he came to court willingly and has submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. Now the arraignment has taken place. Um, the application for bail was argued and my Lord has adjourned to next week, Wednesday the 22nd, to rule. And my Lord had made an order that pending the ruling on the bail application, he should be at the Kuji prisons um, with the correctional service. And the order of my Lord was clear that he should be with the correctional service so that there's no, there's no confusion as to where he's supposed to be pending the ruling of the court, which will come on the 22nd. This remand order is coming after Justice Ulukayo de Adeni ordered that he should be released to his lawyer on November 8th after spending months in detention.